So Unity provides an ability to write our own user-defined programming scripts to add customized behaviors to game objects. That is, it provides an ability to create our own components to control any specific behavior of the Unity game object. In this video, I am going to explain to you Unity script, what exactly scripts are, which programming language do we use or what is the default programming language in Unity for building games or applications in Unity. I will also be writing a sample Unity program as well. Hello folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data Hadoop, virtual reality, augmented reality and cloud computing helping you to take your career to new heights. If you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. So let's get started. So what is a script in Unity? Well, a script is a programming file inside which we can write some code to create our own components to control any specific behavior of the Unity game objects. Every game object's behavior is controlled by the components attached to them. Unity has some built-in components, but then there are uh, times when you want to add your own features like responding to specific user inputs, trigger some special events, etc. Unity's default programming language is C Sharp, uh, depicted by C and Hash, but we call it as C Sharp. It's an object-oriented uh, programming language, uh, just like Java and C++, and is industry standard for developing games. So let's create our very first script. So let me open uh, my uh, Unity environment. So right click on Assets folder on the left hand side then click or select create and then select a folder option and name it as scripts now go inside this folder by double clicking on it and once again right click inside this folder and then select create followed by C sharp script and we can name this script as cube rotation so the naming convention says that first letter of the C sharp script should always be capital letter and the name should be give a single word in fact so as you can see that I have given the name as just a single word you can see that on the right hand side, uh, the default C sharp uh, code appears in the inspector panel here. Now, if you want to add your own code and wants to modify the existing default code, then double click on the C sharp file. So now you will see a Visual Studio ed editor opened up uh, showcasing the C sharp code in front of you. So the first three lines, which are these lines shown here. So the, these first three lines of the code are the namespaces. So namespaces in C sharp contains uh, necessary classes which are used to handle the application. Here in systems.collection, system is the namespace here and collections is the class. So if you want to access the class of a namespace, we want to use namespace.className. Now we can use uh, the using keyword which is this keyword here uh, in order to avoid writing complete name all the time. Next on the line 5 here uh, you will see that this statement uh, public class cube rotation uh, colon mono behavior. So here you can see that the name of the C sharp script which is cube rotation and the class here is same which means that whenever you create a C sharp script the name of the class is taken from the name of the script mono behavior here so mono behavior is the predefined class here 
separated by colon from its base class called cube rotation. This statement uh, means that I am inheriting the functions of mono behavior class into our cube rotation class. I will explain it in a while. So let's move on. So if you see line number 8 and line number 14, you will see two functions. Uh, one is a start and another one is update inside this mono behavior class. So I can inherit these functions from mono behavior class to cube rotation class. And if you're wondering uh, what exactly is inheritance, then let me tell you uh, that it's an object oriented programming concept through which one class acquires the property of another class. For example, a child inherits the traits of his or her parents, right? Just like that. Uh, with inheritance, we can reuse the fields and methods of the existing class. And I will try to create a separate series on the objected oriented programming. Uh, and if you want to learn these concepts right now, then I will share the link in the description of resources from where you can learn these object oriented programming concepts. Now moving on to these functions, uh, start function, which is this function. Uh, is a function which actually executes at the start of the program. So it is sometimes referred as execution at the first frame of the program. Update functions on the other hand uh, executes whenever there is a need of it to execute. That is, it executes at every frame of the application or game. Now, if you want to get the list of all the functions which can be declared inside this mono behavior class, then you can get the same from Unity's online documentation. So let me show you how to get the details or documentation of these functions. So first open your browser and now type the search string as Unity scripting API mono behavior. So you will see this uh, uh, scripting API mono behavior documentation here. So just click on it. So then this script reference uh, page uh, will open up which can which is listing out details pertaining every possible functions associated with mono behavior. So you can scroll down to uh, you know messages uh, section. Okay. Here. So you can see this messages section and then scroll down further to go on start and update functions. So here is the start function and here is the update function. So you can click on them to get the required information. So let's click on start function here. So now you can see all the details related to this mono behavior start function here. All right. Now let's write the code to rotate our cube. So let's first declare a variable called rotation. Okay. So come down here and we will be using a data type called vector three. So vector three rotation. So vector three data type is an array of three floating values and which accepts X, Y, and Z axis based inputs. It represents points and vectors in 3D space. Now, once I define the variable here, we will be then initializing this rotation variable in the start function. Okay. And yes, don't forget to put a semicolon here right after rotation uh, variable name. And then inside uh, this uh, start function, we'll be initializing our uh, rotation. A variable so I will type the code something like this rotation equals to new vector 3 and then we will define the axis values x y and z axis values here and then semicolon so that the three values inside the brackets represent values pertaining x y and z axis so I have chosen some random values here and you can uh, you are free to choose your own uh, values uh, for x, y and z axis. 
Now let's move on to the update function and type the code something like this. So type the code transform dot rotate and then inside this pass the variable name as rotation and then semicolon. So we can use this rotate function to rotate any game object. Now save this script using control s and then attach this script using drag and drop. So it's just select this script here and just drag and drop it to cube given in the hierarchy panel. So if you see on the right hand side in the inspector panel, you can see that uh, this script is attached to the cube now. And this step was just to validate that your script is uh, uh, attached successfully. Now go on to the game tab here, okay, which we are already in and uh, click on play button. You can see that our cube is rotating along Y axis. If you click on the scene tab, also you could see uh, same cube rotating, right? So this cube is rotating very fast and in order to control the speed of rotation, we will introduce some time factor in it. So let me show you how to control this speed. So let's open our Visual Studio once again. And here we will type the code like rotation into time dot delta so that it can control the movements of the cube now save this script and please ensure that you are out of uh, play mode right now so let's click on play once again so now you can see that cube is rotating in a controlled fashion and if you want to increase the speed further then you can change the value provided at y-axis Okay, so let's come out of this play mode once again and change the value from 60 to 100 here. Now once again save this script using control s and then click on play button once again. So you can see that its speed has increased now. So you can just play around with these values to increase or decrease the speed along the axis where this value is defined. So folks, this is it for this video. In the next upcoming videos, we will start creating very first augmented reality project in Unity as well as going to show you the steps to generate Vuforia licensing key. This is going to be the first step in creating the application uh, and the demo of which I have already showed in the very first video of the series. So here's today's question. What is the default programming language in Unity to create various scripts? Please post your answers, comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. In case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.